How's that for impressive music? That's the soundtrack to the Cecil B. DeMille blockbuster, The Ten Commandments. That is awesome music. Inspiring, powerful, majestic. Because today's afternoon five minute video, thank you, Five Minute Bill. It's about Moses, because the first reading about Moses from Exodus. And hands down, Moses is my favorite Old Testament person. I probably said it on these little five-minute chats before. An incredibly humble and generous person. All because of the time he spent with God. God changed Moses from a murdering coward who flees to a man who can forgive and intercede and be unafraid. So today's first reading from uh, Exodus is Moses up on the mountain, been up there 40 days, 40 nights, praying, gets the Ten Commandments, and no sooner than he gets the Ten Commandments, God tells him that the Israelites have committed idolatry. They've abandoned their faith in the God of their ancestor to Abraham Isaac and Jacob, and are now worshiping a molten image, the cow, made by none other than Aaron, the brother of Moses. And here's where we really see Moses shine. God tells Moses, let me smite them, wipe them all out, and I'll start over with you and make a great nation of you. Now that's, that sounds like a pretty good deal. I'd go for that. I mean, already the people have complained to Moses incessantly that he's brought him out in the desert to die. A couple of times they've threatened to kill he and Aaron, picking up rocks and going to stone him and fumble their way back to Egypt and settle for slavery. So they've already been threatened. And Moses is forgiving and forbearing and intercedes for them. And basically, Moses makes a statement. I know who you are. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You did not bring your people out here just to die. But instead, you know, have mercy on your people. It's an act of intercession on Moses' part, but Moses is revealing that he truly he knows God and knows him well. Even when Moses falters the one time, um, he doesn't whine about it. And he accepts the punishment God gives him about not going into the Holy Land. But Moses intercedes for the people and God does not smite them. He comes down the mountain, tells Joshua they're having a big party, destroys the Ten Commandments. I mean, they're not keeping them anyway, so what's the point of delivering them to him? And then grinds down the golden calf made by Brother Aaron and makes the people drink the water with the gold dust on it. He even asked Aaron, hey, what happened? And Aaron's like, I don't know. I uh, I do the gold in the oven and out came a cow. B.S. Aaron made it and even told the people, here, O Israel, is your God who delivered you. And then they have this big party. And I don't know where they got the stuff for the party. I mean, they've been reduced to drinking water and eating, eating uh, manna and doves. So did they have alcohol? Did they ferment something? Did they have some sort of cheap booze? I have no idea. But they had enough to have a party, revelry, debauchery, and um, God brings it into all that through Moses. For extra reading, take a look at Numbers chapter 16. And there you're going to find yet another incident where people complain against Moses. And they even co-opt God's words. They want to go back to Egypt, the land of milk and honey the tribe of Dathan. And Moses and Aaron are distraught because it's the leaders of the people. The tribe of Dathan mounts an insurrection against Moses. And God says, okay, 
have them go over there and have you stay over here and uh, let's see what happens. And the earth cracks open and swallows up the tribe of Daph and I love that. Uh, they get destroyed and um, not that they're destroyed, I don't love that. So everybody changes their mind real fast. Oh, we never doubted you, Moses. Never doubted you. You know, yeah, right, you never doubted them. Give me a break. Anyway, it's, um, no, good, we're at the end of that anyway, so. Moses, gotta love him. Phenomenal. He should be interceding for us. I ask for his intercession all the time as a pastor because he's a good pastor of people. He knows tremendous forbearance and love of his people, even when they want to kill him. And I ain't got nobody wants to kill me, so I really want to love my people and serve them faithfully and freely. God bless and goodbye.